Welcome everyone. In this video, I will show you how I built this 3D printed enclosure that looks like a medium format camera for my Hawkeye FPV camera module. Even though the sensor inside the camera isn't anywhere near as big as that of a real medium format camera, for example, the viewfinder is at least just as cool as theirs. It is a fully functional mechanism that hides and protects the built-in 2-inch display perfectly. As you can see, there are quite a few parts that went into building this camera. Of course, the main component is the Hawkeye FPV module, which I have already showcased in two previous videos. The setup you see here is from my latest project, where I built a camera enclosure for it with a metal C-mount shell. I also mounted heatsinks directly onto the processor and memory chips for better cooling. The camera drives a 2-inch LCD. The display has its own controller module and everything is mounted in the viewfinder part of the camera. The camera is powered by a 7.4V 3000mAh battery. The battery pack is basically two 18650 cells connected in series. The rest of the parts are all 3D printed, such as the rear door of the camera body, the viewfinder and the main camera housing. Together, these components form the final device. We can start with the main camera body, since everything is mounted on it or placed inside it. It is a one-piece print. It took about 3.5 and an hours on my Bamboo Lab X1C printer and used roughly 110 grams of filament. I used supports, so they also contributed to the filament usage. The cutout on the top is made to accommodate the viewfinder and its mechanism. The four holes on the sides are for the breast insert nuts. As you can see from the pattern, the front side of the body was printed first. In the center, there is a recessed rectangular opening to firmly hold the C-mount flange and on the side, there is a smaller hole for the shutter button. The right side has a recessed rectangular opening for the camera processor's USB port and micro SD card slot. The two circular pockets are for tiny magnets that will hold the door covering the ports. The back side features a drawbridge style door that allows comfortable access to all the components inside the camera body. The small notch at the top provides a tight fit for the little tab on the rear door so it stays closed. The door receives two breast insert nuts, one on each side, and it can fully open. On the bottom side, there are five holes. Four of them are used to attach the camera's processor module to the housing, and the fifth one, in the center, receives a quarter inch breast insert nut so the camera can be mounted on a tripod. The other side of the housing has a recess for my custom remote controller that I made for this camera module. There's also a large hole for the main power switch, which connects or disconnects the battery from the rest of the circuit. Next, we move on to the viewfinder. It accommodates this 2-inch display along with its controller module and together with the 3D printed parts, it forms a fully collapsible viewfinder. I got the inspiration for the mechanism from one of my TLR cameras. I used the same basic concept, but adjusted the dimensions to fit this build. It is not quite as smooth as the original, but it is more than good enough. The key component of the viewfinder is this 2-inch LCD. It has 640 times 240 resolution with a 4 to 3 aspect ratio. The display is driven by this controller module and the great thing about it is that it accepts an analog video signal directly from the camera, so only one wire is needed to transfer the video. On top of that, the board can run directly from the battery voltage, so no extra power circuitry is required. The display and its driver board are mounted on this support plate. It is designed to hold the display in the correct position using these tiny locating blocks that stick out from the surface. The rectangular opening allows the ribbon cable to pass through. The display driver is then attached to the backside with a few screws driven directly into the plastic, no insert nuts needed here. The entire viewfinder rests in this skirt. It supports the display assembly, but it also holds the flaps and provides pivot points for them. The front flap is designed to fold down over the skirt and completely cover it, just like on a real camera. Everything is held together with tiny M2 screws. They work quite fiddly to assemble, but it just takes a bit of patience. I tightened the screws just enough to add a little friction, so the open viewfinder stays in place, but not so tight that it's hard to close. Since all the screws move back and forth, there's a chance that the nuts could loosen over time and fall off. To prevent that, I added a small drop of super glue to each nut. With a bit of force, I can still break the bond if needed, but under normal use, they stay locked in place. Once both flaps were mounted, I installed the screws for the sliding mechanism. The rear flap has a hockey stick shaped groove 
that lets it open and close together with the front flap. The bolts and nuts is specially needed to be locked with the super glue because after just one open close cycle the nut already came loose. While the glue was curing I prepared the display driver module. Its original connector was a bit problematic because the cable sticks out sideways which would block the viewfinder mechanism from closing. So I decided to remove the connector and solder the wires directly to the board. It's just three wires and this way they point in the right direction. After cleaning everything up, I mounted the display and its driver onto the support plate. I threaded the ribbon cable through the rectangular opening and I used two screws to secure the board. I also added plastic washers to avoid any potential short circuits. Then I moved on to the main camera body and started installing the components. The main switch was the easiest, just screw on the nut and it's done. I didn't shorten the cables yet because I first wanted to make sure everything worked. The looks can wait. Next came my 5 8 joystick, which is held in place with 4 bolts and nuts. After that, I installed the shutter button on the front panel. And take note, at this point it's a green button. This will become important later in the video. As I mentioned earlier, the viewfinder is attached to the main body with 4 screws that go into brass insert nuts, so I installed those as well. And since the soldering iron was already hot, I also installed a quarter inch insert nut in the bottom, the two insert nuts in the rear door and another insert nut in the small door covering the USB-C port and the micro SD card slot. Since I already had the door in my hands, I also installed the magnets. I had marked them beforehand according to their polarity so they wouldn't rip out their counterparts in the camera body. I slightly heated the plastic so the magnets would fit snugly into their holes. I had to use my titanium tweezers for this since all my other tweezers are magnetic. Then I repeated the same process on the camera body, warmed it up slightly and pressed in the magnets. To make sure they wouldn't pop out, I added a few drops of super glue and let it cure. At this point, I could finally install the camera module into the body. Just as a reminder, the module now has two heat sinks mounted directly on the chips that get hot during operation. The HDMI port and the two buttons won't be accessible inside the camera, but I don't need them anyway. What I will use is this 5 pin connector. It supplies power to the camera, carries the composite video signal and also allows triggering video recording and taking pictures. The USB port and micro SD card slot line up with the opening on the side of the housing. Finally, this 2 pin connector is used for the 5 way joystick. I actually have a video where I explain how these two wires can handle 5 different functions, so if you are interested, check out that video as well. These 4 nuts are used to secure the camera module inside the housing. The sensor module itself sits in this metal shell. The 3D printed part here serves multiple purposes. It sets the correct height so the sensor sits at the proper flange focal distance behind the lens and it also holds a coated glass which is an infrared cutoff filter. The small tabs are threaded and they are used to firmly fix the assembly into the housing. I couldn't use screws that were too long otherwise they would hit the plastic that holds the sensor but luckily everything was designed with the right dimensions. While installing the parts, I realized that I had been a bit too fast and forgot to plug the cable into the 5 pin connector, so I quickly fixed that mistake. Next came the battery. It has this T connector for powering devices and the JST connector for charging. I bought some cables that plug into the T connector but I only needed the connector itself. So I removed the heat shrink tubing and desoldered the wires. Before you ask, yes, it was easier to buy the connector with a cable attached and I will reuse the cables for another project later. Then I attached my own wires to the connector. The positive wire goes directly to the battery's positive terminal, while the negative wire goes to a power distribution hub. I created a small power hub for both the positive and negative line using a prototyping board and some screw terminals. The positive node connects the display and the camera to the battery's positive terminal. This line is routed through the main power switch. So when the switch is pressed, it simply connects or disconnects the battery from the circuit. The negative node connects the display, the camera and the shutter button to the battery's negative terminal. Only two signal wires left, the yellow wire for the video signal and the green wire for the trigger signal from the button to the camera. The trigger is just a simple pull down signal, so when the button is pressed, the signal pin is connected to the ground. It only needs a short pulse to take a picture. Before squeezing everything into the enclosure, I tested the entire setup. And here comes the oopsie. 
I mentioned earlier that the shutter button was green. Well, it turns out, and this one was completely on me, that this button is normally closed. So as soon as the camera powered up, the button kept spamming the trigger signal and the camera continuously froze and took pictures. After realizing what was happening, I panicked a bit because I wasn't sure if I had normally open version of this button at home. Luckily, after some searching I found one, and even better, it had a black cap which actually fits the camera much better. After confirming that the camera was working correctly, I gently packed the cables into the housing and installed the viewfinder. Just four short screws and it was done. The final step was securing the battery. I decided to mount it using a semi-permanent solution, a self-adhesive velcro tape. One side goes on the battery, the other on the inside wall of the camera. I placed the battery on its side to make it fit, but I had already planned this orientation when I designed the 3D model. With the battery in place, the only thing left was the rear door. I popped it into position and tightened the screws into the brass insert nuts. The screws sit nicely in their countersunk holes and also act as the pivot point for the door. Then I also installed the small cover for the USB port and the microSD card slot. The very last detail is the attachment for the joystick. I made this serrated wheel that fits onto the joystick. It not only covers the entire PCB, but also provides a solid grip. At first it feels a bit strange to move the wheel like a joystick instead of rotating it, but you get used to it quickly. And with that, the camera is complete. The front has the metal C-mount, hiding a 1 inch type sensor and the shutter button. The right side has the control wheel and the main power switch. The back side has the large access door. The left side has the USB and the microSD ports hidden under magnetic cover. The bottom has the quarter inch threaded insert for tripod mounting. And finally, the best part, the top features the collapsible viewfinder with the integrated 2 inch LCD display. I'm really satisfied with how the wall mechanism turned out, because this was by far the hardest part to design and model. But as you can see, it opens and closes very smoothly, and it doesn't look half bad either. When it comes to handling, the joystick with the control wheel works very well. I can navigate through the menu without any issues, change the settings easily, and everything feels responsive. The zoom function also works perfectly. Due to the lens I used and the limited space, I couldn't focus perfectly on very close subjects optically, but what I wanted to demonstrate here is that with the help of digital zoom, I can achieve perfect focus on the subject and then take the photo with no zoom applied. Of course, this only really works with stationary subjects, but that's fine since this camera is manual focus anyway, which is a slower process. And even though the body shape resembles a medium format camera, we can still use the powerful video capabilities of the module. It can record crisp 6K footage without any issues. So with that, I think I have shown everything I wanted to show. If you would like more information, please visit my website. I have added some extra content there, including additional photos and detailed descriptions. You can also find affiliate links for the parts I used if you decide to pick any of them. And if you enjoy this type of content, please consider supporting me by becoming a channel member. Membership gives you access to my project files, for example the 3D printable files for this camera, and it also helps support future projects, tutorials and builds. I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you learned something, and I will see you in the next one.